2.6 linear inequalities in two variables. We are going to learn how to graph now inequalities on a coordinate plane as yeah, man, well. So you have AX plus BY is less than C. Uh, and you could have AX plus BY is less than or equal to C. You could have that it is greater than C or greater than or equal to C. So you have four answers there. And we're going to figure out how to graph all those. So check if the solution is true or false. All you have to do is plug in the point. So if I plug in 0, 1, that means plug in a 0 for x and a 1 for y. So 2 times 0 plus 3 times 1. Well, that's 0, so we end up with just 3. Is 3 greater than or equal to 5? No. Since 3 is not greater than or equal to 5, we would say, nope, that's a false answer. How about 4, negative 1? So if I plug in a 4, negative 1 there, I plug a 4 in there, a negative 1 in there, so I get 8 and negative 3. So I get 5 is greater than or equal to 5. The correct answer is true, and here's the reason why. Because it says greater than or equal to, and 5 equals 5, which is why that answer is true. And if we try 2, 1, I plug that in, I plug a 2 in for x and a 1 in for y, I end up with 7 is greater than or equal to 5. And that is a true statement. 7 is greater than 5. So a graphing linear inequalities, what you want to do here for your order is first step, uh, graph the line the same way that you graph an equation. Same way we did the quick graphs in 2.3, that's what I want you to do here. You find the y-intercept, then you just graph that point. Then from that point you do the slope, the rise or the run. You just count up and over or down and to the left, either way. Once you have all those points, there's a couple different things that change. First of all, if the line is less than or greater than, it is a dashed line that goes there, right? If it's less than or if it's greater than, it is a dashed line line that goes there. Not a solid line, but a dashed line. Okay, If it is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, that means it is a solid line. So basically, if there is an equal to anywhere in a problem, it is a solid line, right? It is a solid line that goes there if it's there anywhere in a problem. After number three, the line, if you graph it, we need to shade, and we need to shade a side of that line. We need to, sh to test a point that's not on that line and shade. If it's true, you shade towards the point. If it's false, you shade away. And I'll explain in a little more detail what that means when we see some examples, but keep the T's in mind. True, shade towards. True, shade towards. True, towards. True, towards. True, towards. True, towards. Keep those T sounds in your head when you're doing this problem. So X is, or sorry, Y is less than negative 2. Well, that's a straight line without a slope. So that means basically I go to negative 2, I put a point there, and that is a line going straight across horizontally. Because it is less than, that means it is a dotted line that goes straight across there. So now I need to pick a point not in that line. I normally pick the point 0, 0 if I can, because zeros plugging in are pretty uh, simple. So I plug in a 0. There is no x, but I can plug in the y. Is 0 less than negative 2? So here's 0, 0. Is that true? Nope. So it's not true. I don't shade towards this point. I shade on the other side, which means I shade everything down below the line. The next problem, x is less than or equal to 1. x equals a number is a vertical line. So I go over 1, and I draw a vertical line straight up and down. Because it is or equal to or has an equals anywhere in it, that means I draw a straight line. Once again, I pick a point not on the line there. So in point not on the line, the easiest point I can think of to pick is 0, 0. So I take the point 0, 0, which is right here, and I plug it in. And all I can do is plug in the x, not the y. And when I do that, I end up with 0 is less than 1. Is that true? Is 0 less than 1? You betcha. So since this is where the point is, and it's true, I shade towards that point, which is why I shaded everything on that side, because I shaded towards the point. So example three, when I go to graph this line, first I need to graph the y-intercept. Well, it might look like there is nothing else here, but there is. The y-intercept is like we saying plus zero, which means the y-intercept for this line is zero, so I put a zero right there. The slope of this line is two, so since the slope of this line is two, that means I am going to uh, have the slope of two over one, 
So it means I go up to right one, up to right one, up to right one, and I can go down to and left one. Now notice how I also chose a dotted line. I chose a dotted line here because it is less than. So I need to pick a point not in that line. Now I normally pick 0, 0, but we can't use that because 0, 0 is on that line. So I'm going to use the point 1, 1, which is right here. There's the point 1, 1. I'm going to use 1, 1 because it's not on that line, which means I'm going to plug a 1 in on each side. So when I do that, is 1 less than 2? So remember, here's the point 1, 1. When I plug it in, it's a true statement, which means I shade towards that point. Since this point was on this side, I shade everything on that side of the line. I'm not a crook. I burn everything I've got. For this problem here, I need to solve for y to get it by itself. So to do that, I'm going to, uh, since it's a positive 2x, I'll subtract 2x on both sides. Remember, I can't put those together because this one has an x and this one does not. So I have negative 5y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 10. And since so it's negative 5 times y, I'll divide both sides by negative 5 and the negative cancels out. But remember, when you multiply or divide by a negative when you're talking about inequalities, you need to flip that sign. And I'm dividing by a negative, which means it's no longer greater than or equal to. It's less than or equal to. And negative 2 divided by negative 5 is 2 over 5. 10 divided by negative 5 is negative 2. So this is my new graph. So my y-intercept is negative 2, which means I go down negative 2 and put a point. My slope is 2, 5, which means I go up 2 and over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, put a point. I go up 2 and over 5, which would be off the paper. Or I could do the opposite, which is down 2 and left 5. And I draw a solid line to connect them because it's less than or equal to. So now I pick a point that's not on that line, which is 0, 0. So right there it is. And when I plug that in, um, I basically can shrink that down to 0 is less than negative 2. Is that true? Is 0 less than negative 2? No, that's not true. It's false, which means I have to shade over on this side of the line. If it was true, I'd shade towards, but it's not, so I shade away, which is false. No deal. So in example 4, you have relatives living in both the U.S. and Mexico, and you are given a prepaid phone card worth 50 bucks. Calls within the, within the continental U.S. cost $16 per minute, and calls in Mexico cost $0.44 cents per minute. We are going to write a linear inequality to represent the number of minutes you can use for calls within the U.S. and for calls to Mexico. So when we come back here, I'm actually going to finish this problem up because I don't want to run out of time and overlap this. Even though it's not that long, we'll take our time, go over the word problem, and finish up uh, when we come back.